Ahoy there, mateys, and welcome back to me channel. My name is Natalie, and today we are watching Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Are you guys gonna miss my pirate's accent when we're done with this trilogy? Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and welcome if you're new. Today we are diving on into the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie at World's End. When I first started watching these movies on my channel with all of you, I wasn't really sure that I was gonna be watching the first three. I really thought I was just gonna be revisiting The Curse of the Black Pearl and calling it a day, but a lot of you were really vocal in the comments down below about wanting me to watch these first three movies. And to be honest with you, I'm really happy that I did it because I've actually really enjoyed these movies and. And they've been really fun. They're campy, but in a really like satisfying way, a little theatrical, comical with some moments of drama and seriousness. And they're just really satisfying. They're like a perfect blockbuster feel good movie. And I think the actors and creators of at least these first three Pirates movies really knew what they were going for tonally and did a good job with them. And so I was definitely excited to watch this one. I'm filming this intro after I've already seen it, of course, but at the time when I sat down to watch it, I wasn't sure if I had seen this one or not. It's honestly a lot like my reaction to the second movie where I thought I hadn't seen it. And then as I was watching it, I thought maybe I had. It was kind of a similar experience with this movie. I thought I hadn't seen it when I sat down to watch it, but some things did kind of feel vaguely familiar to me. Me. Most of it didn't though, so it was kind of filled with lots of surprises and unexpected moments, and I really enjoyed it a lot. And I hope you guys will enjoy watching this movie with me. It was definitely an emotional roller coaster. I experienced, I think, pretty much every emotion in this reaction. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy my laughter and my tears, and also make sure to stick around to the end of this video to see how I rate this movie. And with all that being said, I think it's finally time to grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's get into the movie. Oh my God, we're, I feel like we're always opening on like a new scene or a scene where people are getting arrested. Right to legal counsel, suspended. Oh, wow. I wonder if like somebody we know is in this crowd. I feel like there's gotta be some dramatic reveal. That's a kid? Oh my God, we're hanging a kid? The king and his men stole the queen from her bed. Singing a little song. He's got a little coin. Is this kid important? Yo. Oh, he's gonna sing too. Hoist the colors high. Oh my god, I know this song from TikTok. <laughs> they're like, oh what? Oh, they're singing. Oh my god. Oh my god. We can't control them anymore. They've started to sing. So. I, I think he can hear. Finally. Finally. What? Why did he want them to sing? Aww. Okay, that coin does have some significance, but the boy, I guess, doesn't. I don't know why he wanted them to sing. Does he get joy out of killing them when they're trying to be brave and show solidarity? That is a cool way to start the movie, I will say. I actually really enjoyed the opening sequence for this movie, like more than the last one, I think. Because earlier this day, not far from here, a thief broke into my most revered uncle's temple and tried to make off with these. Oh. The navigation of charts. The route to the farthest gate. Oh, at world's end. Oh, Will, huh? Will was breaking in to steal it. Yeah. Wow, they held him underwater for a long time. How long has he been holding his breath? <laughs> So, Fang, I assure you, our intentions are strictly honorable. Hey! Beautiful! It's unfor- Ha ha ha! The face he makes, sorry. Drop your weapons, or I kill your man! He's- what? They don't care. Kill him, he's not our man. Oh, there's a- there's a double- there's a double double crosser here! Who's he with? Who else is here? <laughs> oh, those guys, they had a plant. The triple cross. Poor Elizabeth is fighting in a dress. Oh my God. <laughs> God bless him, he tried. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah, what's she gonna do? Oh, there's a bomb in it. Yes, I love her. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Let me tell you, I don't think I could 
make it as a pirate. I don't think that that life is for me. And it's not because of the harsh ways of living, the seasickness, or even the scurvy. No, I don't think I could do it because of the stench, the smell. It's pretty foul. There's no showers on these boats, okay? There's not even a proper bathroom. You just know that nobody is smelling as fresh as a daisy except for maybe Elizabeth Swan because somehow that girl always looks clean. I guess exceptions are made for cute ingenues, but I would be screwed. But alas, the life of a pirate is not for me, and I am perfectly content to stay on land with access to showers and fragrances like these ones from Scentbird, the sponsor of today's video. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service that allows you to try out name brand fragrances at an affordable price. Each fragrance comes with a 30-day supply, so you'll be able to test out lots of different fragrances without committing to an expensive full-size bottle. And with over 700 fragrances available, you'll always have something new to try. Every fragrance tells a story, much like clothing and hairstyles, your fragrance can say a lot about you. I personally love scents that are a little warm and sweet. I really love notes of amber and musk because those kinds of scents just remind me of like sitting around a fire outside in the mountains, maybe with some friends sipping whiskey. And that is always the vibe that I am trying to embody. So I was super stoked when Scentbird sent me Extra Milk by Dead Cool. This fragrance is so lovely. It's really simple. It just has notes of bergamot, amber, and musk. It just feels like warm, cozy, really friendly and inviting. This kind of scent is exactly what I would wear every day, pretty much. It's not too complicated. There's not too many notes involved. It's just simple, really warm, a little sweet. It feels kind of like a hug, honestly, is the best way I can describe it. This perfume feels like it hugs me and I really enjoy it a lot. I'm also really enjoying Sleek Sandalwood by Maison 21G. This scent is like a perfect vacation scent. I really feel like this is something I would wear on a beach trip. It still has one of my favorite notes in it, white musk, and it still has that warm, sweet vibe, but there's some sandalwood and sesame in there that feels kind of adventurous, a little outdoorsy. I just envision myself walking down a beautiful beach boardwalk in a flowy sundress with a cocktail in hand when I'm wearing this scent. It just makes me feel like I'm I'm on vacation. I'm ready to have a good time. There's nothing on the agenda. There's nothing planned. I'm just ready to be present in the moment and have fun. I really think that that's the sandalwood and sesame notes coming into play here because it, it makes me feel like there's something exotic about this scent. It doesn't feel super simple. There's also a little bit of fig in here, which just adds like a fruitiness that isn't like super in your face. It's really subtle and it just kind of hides under the other notes. This is definitely a really lovely perfume and I can't wait to bring it on my next vacation. When I smell... Isle of Blanc by Vahi, I basically feel like I have just exited the best spa treatment of my life. Like I just got the best mud clay facial ever, the best deep tissue massage, and now I am going to sit and listen to the peaceful ocean waves. But instead of drinking a cocktail, I'm going to drink some cucumber water because I'm a health queen. That is what this scent makes me feel like. It makes me feel like I'm on top of the world and no one's going to get to me. I am zen. I am calm. I am peaceful. I am in charge of my destiny. That is how I feel when I smell this. It feels like if I'm wearing this, no one's going to get to me. Anybody who wears this scent, I just feel like you know what you're doing. You know, that's what I get from this scent. It's got these gorgeous notes of coconut and patchouli that feel really warm and inviting, but it also has this bright citrus feel to it from the pomelo and solar orange flower. And then to balance it all out, there's cedar wood in there, which feels so woodsy, which I love. I love woodsy scents. And it just really grounds the scent and makes it feel approachable while still feeling really refined and badass. Honestly, I, I really like this one a lot too. <laughs> And if the last scent was feeling a little mature and refined, this is the perfect scent to counteract that. Sunsets in Capri by Glass House just feels so bright, so youthful, so playful. I feel like this is a scent that I wear when I want to feel like 10 years younger, <laughs> but like a version of me 10 years ago that actually had good taste. <laughs> Once again, we have my favorite notes of amber and musk, which are definitely warm and a little bit cozy. But at the same time, you have really sweet notes of mandarin and peach that definitely float on the top of this and feel very youthful. Full, and it's balanced out by this floral scent of lily that just feels so cute. When I'm wearing this, I should just be wearing a cute little sundress, perhaps going shopping at the farmer's market, walking my dogs, hanging out with friends, perhaps enjoying a glass of rosé at brunch. Like this is the perfect brunch scent. It just feels like a morning scent 
or a midday scent. It just feels so light, so airy, so fun. So if you want to try out Scentbird for yourself and possibly discover your signature scent, just click the link in my description to get 55% off of your first month with Scentbird, or you can use my QR code. You can get the product for half the price, just $8, a total steal. Again, just click my QR code or go to the link in my description and use code GOLD for 55% off of your first order with Scentbird. Thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and thank y'all as always for listening to the sponsor. Now let's get back into the video. Whoa! All right, we're definitely not in the Caribbean anymore or the Caribbean. I still don't really know how to say it. Oh, poor little Jack, he's not meant for this. Somebody says, <gasps> flash of green. Oh, I do remember. Okay, I don't. I still don't know if I've seen this movie, but I've seen like that image of the flash of green at sunset because like I've talked about this with Tyler. We tried to look for that flash of green, which you can sometimes see in an actual sunset out on the ocean, but it's definitely not as dramatic as in this movie. It signals when a soul comes back to this world from the dead. I love how Will has like a, a very stylized type of frostbite. It just looks like blush. His handsome frostbite. It's not getting to the land of the dead, that's the problem. It's coming back. Is that what you're going to say? It's getting back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just too good. I knew. It's also the way Barbosa speaks. He always has these great little like zingers written after like a pause. You know, he does have some awesome lines. How long do we continue not talking? <laughs> just cutting, getting right to the point. Once we rescue Jack, everything will be fine. Mm, I think you need to talk, babe. He's got to tell her what he saw because she doesn't know. She thinks she can just hide it like she's being all suave. For what we want most, there is a cost must be paid in the end. Oh? She had the same locket as Davy Jones. Is she the love of his life? I thought the love of his life would have been dead. Let her run straight and true. Okay! <laughs> He's got the crazy eyes going. Have we reached the end of the world? Is it the end? Yes. They really could theme an entire, I know they have a Pirates of the Caribbean ride, but you could theme a whole ride just off of this movie so far, honestly. Is it gonna be Jack? Oh my God, that is, we're very close on his nose. <laughs> it's to eat a peanut. Does he keep dying before he can eat the peanut over and over? What's going on? This is, this is his, ah! Oh, he's killing himself. Oh, it's like purgatory. Help. No. Oh. <laughs> I loved his performance on that. Just a little mouth twitch. This is really just a scene to demonstrate Johnny Depp's uh, depth and range as an actor. <laughs> What are you gonna do to the goat? No, don't, no. <laughs> I don't even, how is there even a goat here? You think it would just be Johnny Depp acting like a goat? Rock. A rock crab, oh, okay. Oh my God, he's just desperate to move, but he won't leave the ship behind. Oh my God, the way they've like executed this really makes me feel insane. Like, <laughs> I really feel like I'm in his head and I don't like it. Oh, there's a bunch of them now. Uh-oh, are they friendly crabs? He did throw it. Are they gonna help or just <laughs> hunt him down? I mean. <laughs> oh, they're helping. You're doing a great job. Witty Jack is closer than you think. Oh, he, ah, amazing. Is he gonna be on the ship? Cause that's hysterical. It just looks like he made this happen when it just happened to him comically, you know? Looks like he's in control of his own fate. Slap me thrice and hand me to me mama. It's Jack. <laughs> wow, what a saying. Slap me thrice and hand me to my mama. Oh yeah, you're gonna feel guilty now, huh? We're gonna have to talk about it, Elizabeth. Why should I sail with any of you? 
Four of you have tried to kill me in the past. One of you succeeded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. It comes out, the tea! Yep. Captain gives orders on the ship. The captain of the ship has given orders. My ship makes me captain. They be my charge. Oh, my God. Stow it! Not both of you! That's an order! Understand? <laughs> Sorry. I just thought with the captain issue in doubt, I'd throw in my name for consideration. No, bro, but I appreciate it. Ah! I'll vote for you. Aww. Aww. <laughs> I'm surprised these two have survived as long as they have. They, they really add a nice little color. You left Jack to the Kraken. Mm-hmm. Well, I had no choice. You chose not to tell me. Yeah, that was a real problem. It wasn't your burden to bear. But I did bear it, didn't I? Yeah, you did, because you guys have just not been talking about your feelings or emotions. You thought I loved him. Yeah. Well, they put things together really fast once he had the information. If you make your choices alone, how can I trust you? You can't. Oh! Oh my god, the melodrama between these two. I guess we're still fighting. Good. What? Oh, is it mer mermaids? Or oh, or, or dead bodies? <laughs> Thought we were gonna have a mermaid moment, but um, it's more like the Hercules lost souls moment. It should be in the care of dear vigilance. That was the duty it was charged with. Mm-hmm. By the goddess Calypso. Yeah, ma'am, you know a lot about Davy Jones. Who's Calypso, ma'am? Are we gonna see somebody? Oh! <gasps> He's dead? We made it back. Father! Father, have no care! They killed him? They killed the governor? We're not back. They killed him? Oh! Father! Oh, he can see. Elizabeth, are you dead? I think I am. They killed him! Oh my god! That's so hardcore. I learned that if you stab the heart, Yours must take its place. Oh, she's looking right at Will when he's talking about this because he wants to stab the heart. A torch of destiny. Oh, is, is he supposed to be the captain of the Flying Dutchman the way she's looking at him? I'm so proud of you, this Oh! No! Take the line, take the line! <sighs> oh, wow! I'll give your love to your mother, shall I? Please, I want you to Oh my god. She did a really good job with that scene. Oh my god, I'm like a mess. That's so sad. Wow, what a way to reveal that he died. That's tragic. I did not expect to cry like this with this kind of movie. That was <laughs> so heartbreaking. Up is down. Why are these things never clear? Up is down. Is mud, Jackie. What? Hey? Oh my god, he... <laughs> Ah, he's forever gonna be having these little voices in his head, huh? He's gonna be different. Where? There. <laughs> I've def. I think I've seen this because I know uh, he's gonna flip the ship, isn't he? I feel like I've seen this, but I feel like everything before I haven't seen. So I don't. <clears throat> Maybe it was in a trailer. I don't really know. He's trying. He's gonna flip the ship because up is down. What is it? Uh, <laughs> I love that he's just not telling him. He's like, woo! I don't know. What is it? Oh, God. Oh, God, this is starting to get scary. Like, you don't want to miss. If you fall off, you're just stuck here forever. Oh, my God, Will. you He's just so bad at hanging on in these kinds of scenarios. He's always getting stuck and trapped underwater. He's really more of the damsel than Elizabeth. Hey! Honestly, they got to Davy Jones' locker and back pretty fast, all things considered. I mean, it's been almost an hour. I guess I'm understanding why the movie is longer than some of the previous ones, but that journey happened really quickly. Oh, what? Now we're all fighting each other for control of the ship? Marley? Marley! <laughs> All right then. <laughs> oh my god, you know they had so much fun filming that reversal. I love a good comedic reversal. Oh my god, you were 
Oh, all their guns are waterlogged. They were all gonna shoot each other, my god. Release her. She's not part of the bargain. Oh, Will. Will struck a bargain. You hurt Captain Turner? He's the captain now! <laughs> Why didn't you tell me you were planning this? Well, it's my button to bet. Yeah, right? You guys aren't exactly trusting each other right now. You agreed. The Black Pearl was to be mine. And so it was. Wow. <laughs> Everyone's always fighting over the Pearl. Brackett agreed. The Black Pearl was to be mine. Lord Beckett's not going to give up the only ship as can outrun the Dutchman, is he? My god, you guys are idiots. You guys are all idiots. You worked with people who want to get rid of pirates. And what do the Batman have? We have Calypso. Not her. So what's her name? The witch really is Calypso. Or is he just bluffing? You may kill me, but you may never insult me. Who am I? Bro. I'm Kevin Jack Sparrow. <laughs> he was just like all upset. He's like, wait, you didn't know. Come on, man. You know who I am. You're mad. Thank goodness for that, because if I wasn't, this would probably never work. Oh my god. <laughs> Is he gonna clear the ship? Is he gonna land on the ship or clear it? Oh! And that was without even a single drop of rum. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Send this pestilent, traitorous, cow-hearted, yeasty codpiece to the brink. We've all double crossed each other so many times that it doesn't even it doesn't even matter. Like it's fine. Oh, they were gonna follow the pearl, and the Dutchman was supposed to go get Xiao Fang. And presumably Elizabeth is with Xiao Fang. Do you think he plans it all out? Or just makes it up as he goes along. <laughs> he was like, sorry, I was admiring him a little bit there. It does appear like he's got all, it all planned out, but he does not. That's part of the charm. So far, I'm really enjoying this one. I feel like this is even tighter and more comedic than the last one. What, he wants to marry her? Does he want to marry her or some shit? Does he like think she's Calypso? Or is he like using her as a bargaining piece for some reason in Shipwreck Cove? Calypso. Oh, he really does think she's Calypso. They bound you to human form. So the rule of the seas would belong to man and not to me. Mm, yeah, she's leaning into it. She's like, okay, fine. I can play the part. And if I should choose not, then I will take your fury. <laughs> she bite him? Never thought you'd be happy to see Davy Jones, you know? I am shocked that we were about to have a rape scene in a Pirates movie. Not like any Pirates movie, I just mean like a Disney PG-13 movie. They did a great way of like using innuendo to convey that though. So if you were like really little, you might not understand what was totally going on. Take it. Oh. He made me captain. Oof. This guy must be mad. <laughs> like I thought I would be captain. Elizabeth. Oh, hey. Your father will be overjoyed to know you're sick. Huh? My father's dead. Oh, that can't be true. He, he returned to England. Oh, he was lied to. Did Lord Beckett tell you that? He was lied to. Oh, yeah, because he. I was going to say, he'd never agree with killing the governor. He'd be devastated by that. I did not know. Know what? Which side you chose? Yeah. Well, now you do. He, I think he's going to have a change of heart. I think he's going to help. Because I do like the Admiral. He's a good guy. One might say he's admirable. Okay, I'm done. Now come with me. Quickly. Oh, he's helping them escape. Oh, he's helping them all escape. What are you doing? Choosing a side. Oh, see? I knew he had a heart. A good man. James, come with me. Who goes there? Bill. Oh my God. I will follow. No, he won't. He's going to die. Dude, he could have easily, I guess he, he could have easily joined. Why did she choose to go that way? She made it more difficult for herself. <laughs> Crawling. Like that. No, James. Oh, and the thing is, Bootstrap Bill wouldn't have killed him if he was more in his right mind. James Knight, do you feel? Oh my God. He's not going to join your f***ing crew. Yeah, no, he doesn't. I take that as a no. Mm-hmm. It is a no. 
James. Wow, he really had a perfect redemption for a character. The minute he, he chooses a side, he just dies. Those aren't pieces of eight. They're just pieces of junk. Aye, the original plan was to use nine pieces of eight to bind Calypso, but when the first court met, the brethren were to a one. Skint broke. We're still missing Xiao Feng's piece though, right? Xiao Feng is dead. <gasps> She's here! What a reveal. Jones is under the command of Lord Beckett. They're on their way here. Who is this betrayer? Not likely anyone among us. Where's Will? Not among us. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> Better were the days when mastery of seas came not from bargains struck with eldritch creatures, but from the sweat of a man's brow and the strength of his back alone. Y'all know this to be true. He's got to convince them to free Calypso. We must free Calypso. Are they all gonna like laugh? <laughs> oh no, they're angry. Whoa. He's here. May sweet. You come for me. I don't think so, babe. And finally, when we could be together again, mm. you weren't there. Ooh. Why weren't you there? Is my nature. Oh. Would you love me if I was anything but what I am? I do not love you. Yes, you do. It's okay to admit you love her and she broke your heart as well. You have corrupted your purpose. Yeah, you can see he's got sweet eyes. He's just trying to put up a wall and not feel the emotions. What should always have been mine? <laughs> oh my God, he looks like how he used to look when she touches him. Oh, she really is powerful. And what of your feet, David Jones? My heart will always belong to you. Oh, these two have a, a slightly toxic relationship, but I really want it to work out between them, you know? An act of war, and this be exactly that, can only be declared by the Pirate King. Who is the Pirate King? What? I call on Captain Teague, keeper of the code. Hang the cord! Is that Captain Teague? He cares about the code. Oh my God, he looks like Captain Hook. Code is the law. Okay. You're in my way, boy. Oh. I wouldn't want to mess with this guy. Oh my God, he really has like a Captain Hook jacket. I love it. Oh, <gasps> the dog is alive! Amazing. Those were the keys. That's what they're for. Sea turtles, me. Sea turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing that Jack said. That's great. Sea turtles. I love it when there's something you can't really explain in this movie. You just say sea turtles. There's not been a king since the first court. And that's not likely to change. Not likely. Not likely. Thank you for your repetitions to so just hammer it home. I call for a vote. Oh. He's playing the guitar. He's like, I'm just going to chill out. They're not going to make any decisions. Sisumbaji votes for Sisumbaji. Mistress Cheng. Of course. Elizabeth Swan. Barbosa. Villanueva. Elizabeth Swan. What? I know, curious, isn't it? Curious! Amazing! He's like, yeah, I just want to make a decision. They're all so mad. Am I to understand that you will not be keeping to the code then? Ah, he just forced their hands. Oh, there, he's angry. He's like, keep to the rules. Oh my God, it's Elizabeth just because Jack voted differently. Wonderful. Well, say you, Captain Swan, King of the Brethren Court. She's gonna say we fight. Prepare every vessel that floats. I, I think Jack voted for her because he agrees with her and wants to fight and doesn't want to free Calypso. Oh, we're meeting here to discuss parlay. A very conveniently placed sandbar. Ah! They're all gonna have a mean girls moment walking up on each other on this sandbar. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, he can't come on land, so he's in water. It's Davy Jones, and then we got Will here too. Oh, that's crazy. There is trouble in paradise with these two, okay? This relationship has gone south. 100 years in servitude aboard the Dutchman, as a start. That debt was paid, mate. You escaped. This is all, this is all a plan. Yeah, yeah, she's realizing that this is all- Will leaves with us. A plan. And you can take Jack. Right. Done. He said done. 
Why do we have her all tied up when we're about to set her free? Presumably this, she'd be excited about this. And someone must speak the words, Calypso, I release you from your human bonds. Is that it? To said it must be spoken as if to a lover. Calypso, I release you from your human bonds. I don't know if that's really how a lover would say it, but nice try, Barbosa. No, no, you didn't say it right. Oh, now he has to do it. You, you have to say it right. He can do it. He can do it. I don't know if it'll work, but... I release you from your human bonds. Oh, it's working. Oh, look at him. He's sensitive. Oh, my God. It did have to be said right. This is it. This yeah, yeah, yeah. It's happening, bro. <laughs> oh, she's just getting big. I thought she'd, like, turn into a, a spirit or... Or a storm, you know, not just get really big. Oh, whoa. Are those crabs? Oh my God. That's why she was fond of the crabs, eh? Oh, Barbosa, you idiot. Can't believe you thought you could sway her. Just putting so much trust. I mean, who knows? Maybe she will go after, oh. Maybe she will leave him alone. Oh, okay. You know what? Maybe Barbosa did the right thing. Nothing. Now final hope has failed. Nuh-uh, you got Jack. Give her a minute, you know? Maybe give her a minute. A storm is coming. You will listen to me. Oh. Listen! She's having her moment. And what the enemy will see is the flash of our cannons. They will hear the ring of our swords and they will know what we can do by the sweat of our brows and the strength of our backs. This feels like one of those sincere moments that like there would almost be a reversal at the end of this speech where they all just flee. <laughs> Hoist the colors. Hoist the colors. Hoist the colors. No, but I think they're gonna rally. They're gonna rally behind her. Hell yeah. A pirate's life for me! <laughs> he knows it's Calypso. Calypso. Yeah. He knows it's her. And she's angry at you, Davy. She f***ing knows. Is she forming a little cyclone? Oh, boy. Come here, Barbosa! He's just standing at the edge, looking at his hand. We need you at the helm! Aye, that be true. <laughs> He's like, all right, twist my arm. Diane is the day where I should live at home. <laughs> He's such a perfect captain. He does such a great job with it, man. His delivery is perfect. Oh my God. It be too late to walk the cars now, baby. <laughs> He's having a grand old time just talking to himself up here in the storm. No one can even hear him. Wow, is Jack actually gonna become Davy Jones? Did he just kill him? Is he gonna kill him? <gasps> Finally, goodbye, dude. Oh, what a way to kill him, really? I feel like this movie is a lot more <coughs> gross than the last one. That was probably the worst death I've ever seen in this series. That was horrifying. Never too late to learn, mate. Oh my God, he's crazy. Is he gonna go into the, like... Oh, no f way. Just balancing up here. You know, we've had some pretty epic, like, choreography battles with, like, moving parts. This is, like... This is the one for this movie on the ship mast. Elizabeth, will you marry? What? This is the conversation we're having right now? I don't think now's the best time. Oh, now may be the only time. Oh, we're gonna get married right now? Yeah, f talking about our problems. Let's just get married. Barbosa! Marry us! Aww. I'm a I was gonna say, it's not really a time for romance. This is <laughs> kind of wild. We don't need any paperwork. Who cares? Well, Tana, you, take you guys have some communication issues to work on. I think that'd be better before you get married. But if you think you're gonna die today, I kind of understand. So, all right. It's sickness and it help. It help bring the light back to you. Yeah, I feel like Will's about to die or something. The fact that they're doing this. You made it. <laughs> He's like, I can't say it. I'm busy. <laughs> oh my God. All right, guys, we do need to pay attention a little bit. Oh 
boy. These ships are both going down, huh? He is so smooth. Sometimes, you know? Oh, that guy's back! Oh, goodbye. Oh, I don't want Will to stab the heart. I, that that would just be sad. But I like, I don't, I don't know what the other Pirates movies are based around. What are we doing to the monkey? Just because he's undead doesn't mean he deserves torture. I am shocked these ships have been intertwined circling this whirlpool this whole time and have not gone down. Kind of insane. Suspension of disbelief is strong. Tell me, William Tana, do you fear day? Do you? Does he have the heart? Yes! I was gonna say, because he saw the key. Hell yeah. Cruel is a matter of perspective. Is it? Oh no, oh man, oh. I, I think I must have seen this because this, I, once we got married, I was like, Will's probably gonna die, but maybe there's a way he can still be Davy Jones, which kind of sucks, but I don't think. William. Yeah, do you remember now, bro? Oh yeah! <laughs> Jack just does not know what to do now. He was like, I was gonna take the role, but okay. Will, look at me. It's honestly remarkable that Will is even alive at all right now. <laughs> you will not forestall my judgment. Oh, he made him do it. Yeah. Oh, he had Will do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. Oh, that's sad, though. He's going to have to be the captain of the Flying Dutchman. For how long? Forever? That part, it's so funny because so much of this movie is not familiar to me at all. But then there's like little things that I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. So I must have seen it like once. But it does make sense. Like when they got married, I'm like, yeah, I, something's going to happen to Will because it wouldn't happen to Elizabeth. Oh, they're going to carve his heart out. They're going to cut his heart out. Dude, poor Elizabeth has been through it in this movie, man. Dude, Calypso was right, though. She knew what his destiny was going to be. That's another reason why it's kind of obvious that you could see it coming. It's nothing personal, Jack. Oh. It's just good business. Oh, dude, you got to die. You are so f***ing annoying and so smug. Ah, oh, the Flying Dutchman is back with a new captain. Ah, oh, she's so fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not with who you want to be in charge. Somebody else. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, so the curse affects all of them based because of what Davy Jones did. So now they can all look like men? Whoa. <laughs> he just gets a bandana and some sexy eyeliner. Oh my god. Yeah, this isn't going how you want it, sir. Oh, we're gonna blow through it. Blow through the endeavor. Oh, wow, this is his demise. He goes out with a whimper. It's just... Good business. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's shell-shocked. He ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious seeing him just... Avoid getting hit by everything. You know, it's because it's like all effects, but it is so funny. Oop, okay, goodbye. Wow, what a quick demise. And they're all just fleeing. The rest of the armada just fleed. All right. You're no longer bound to the Dutchman. You're free. Oh. By my reckoning, I still have a debt that has to be paid. If you'll have me. Oh. On the wheel, then, Mr. Turner. Aww. Hi, Captain Turner. Aww. He's allowed on land every, like, ten years, right? Can she come on the ship at all, or no? This ship has a purpose again. And where we are bound, she cannot come. Oh, yeah. One day, sure. Oh, one day every ten years. That's so sad. I'm gonna need the other one. Well, so I guess every, so we're starting off, he gets to go on land once now, and then it's 10 years. It's nearly sunset. I can't believe I'm actually emotional right now. Like, what's wrong with me?
me. I feel like I should not be crying. This is kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but it's getting me. Oh, it's his heart. Will you keep it safe? Yes. What happens when she dies? Like we have to get somebody else to be the captain of the ship or is he just gonna be the captain of the Flying Dutchman until he doesn't want to be it anymore and someone else takes his place? Like this is kind of crazy. Well, Gotta have that moment running back after him. Why am I getting worked up? Who am, what is happening? I'm like a mess. I'm being manipulated. Keep a weather eye on the horizon. Because it's funny, because it's like the style of acting and everything is like so over the top and theatrical. Like you think I wouldn't be crying, but I'm still a... <laughs> they just do a really good job of treading the line of being a little campy, a little over the top, but still fitting into the world perfectly so that it's like believable. And I guess I'm just a big wuss. Yay, pirates, like, bunny. 10 years later. Oh, she got pregnant. Oh my God. They really are just living on this island. I, presumably there's infrastructure here then. We just don't see it because they've changed clothes. She hasn't aged at all though. <laughs> oh, I like that choice to show the green flash on her face. He can meet his dad and his grandpa. Okay, that was cute. That was sweet. This movie was a lot of fun and honestly moved me and made me more emotional than I was really expecting. If you told me that I was going to cry two times in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but at the same time, I probably should expect it at this point because I'm such a sensitive little wuss. <laughs> I cry all the time over everything. I mean, Kung Fu Panda 2 also made me cry a lot. So I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. But just the moments with like the governor dying and Elizabeth Swan's reaction to that and the ending with Will, like there are some moments that really tugged at the heartstrings for me in this movie. And it was definitely more of an emotional roller coaster than I was really expecting. All in all, I think I enjoyed this movie even more than the second Pirates of the Caribbean. The first one is iconic to me. Like that one is kind of untouchable. It just stands alone as like a masterpiece in a way. I actually think the first Pirates of the Caribbean is just unironically a really great movie. It just knows what it is. It's tonally perfect. It's very succinct in its storytelling. And even the graphics for the time were really impressive. Some of the cinematic moments are just so impressive, so jaw dropping in that movie and so fun that I don't really think any of the Pirates movies would touch that one. It just stands at the top of the mountain. But I really liked this one a lot too. And I definitely enjoyed it a little bit more than the second. I think the second just got muddied down a bit with introducing Davy Jones as a character. A lot of the stakes were tied up in what was going to happen to Jack and that didn't really feel as compelling because he kind of felt like he had a lot of plot armor around him and I wasn't necessarily that worried for him or that invested in the stakes of that story whereas this one just felt like it leaned into the comedy a lot more there was a lot more double crossing I mean all of the pirates were working with each other or against each other at one point so there was just so much treachery the clear villain was more of the East India Trading Company and what they were doing and so it was really easy to root for their demise and then hope for Davy Jones' demise as well. It was just a more clear objective, I think, to root for in this movie than in the previous one. But that's just me getting a little nitpicky. I really enjoyed the second one too. I just think this one was funnier and all in all just kept the ball rolling a bit and felt a little bit more tight in the story and less drawn out. So how would I rate it? At this point, I actually have just recently started doing movie ratings, but I don't think you guys have actually seen it in any of my videos yet. So the way I've been rating movies is I look at four categories, one which is sound design, two production design, three acting, and four story. And I rate each category out of 10 and then add the score up to see what I give the movie as a whole. For sound design, I mean, it's a Pirates movie. The theme is iconic. The music is iconic. Every time I see one of these movies, the theme is stuck in my head for a week because it is just that incredible. The way this movie started with a hanging scene and the silence and the wind and then the kids starting to sing and all of the pirates singing together, the Hoist the Colors High song was just so moving and fun. What a great beginning to one of these movies. I think that song was perfect and I loved hearing it throughout the movie and that message of solidarity amongst pirates who pretty much never uh, work together. <laughs> It was a nice theme to see throughout the whole movie and just to have that song in there made everything really satisfying. And then to even end it 
um, with Jack Sparrow singing it on the closing of his compass. I just never have a bad thing to say about the sound design for these movies. I mean, they're fun. You get great music, great sound design, great effects noises even. I mean, it just works and I don't really have a bad thing to say about it. So I would give it a 10 out of 10. Production value. I also would rate this pretty high. Again, it's a big, massive blockbuster film with a huge budget behind it. At this point in the franchise, the movies were still doing really well. So they had the money to really put behind the film. I think for the original Pirates, I would have given that production value a 10 out of 10 just because the effects for the time were so impressive. For this movie, I'd probably say nine out of 10 just because there were a couple moments where the effects looked really CGI heavy or computer heavy and like no practical effects were involved whatsoever. Specifically the scene with the demise of Beckett, the East India Trading Company guy when he's walking down the stairs and has all this wood and debris flying around him. I mean, all of it just looked like computer effects and none of it looked real at all. So I kind of wish that some of that had maybe looked a little bit less like a green screen and effects added in post and maybe a mixture of practical effects in there as well. And if I'm wrong about that, you guys can let me know. I mean, again, I'm commenting on something like effects, which is probably the category of filmmaking that I am the least experienced in. Like I've worked with actors, I've acted, I've gone to acting school, I studied plays and plot structure and things like that. So I can comment on that kind of stuff. But when it gets into like effects and graphics, like I really don't know so much of what I'm talking about. I'm more so just talking about it from the perspective of an audience member, someone who's seen a lot of movies and maybe has opinions on things that I like, but I don't really know that much of what I'm talking about in this specific category. So you can let me know in the comments down below. I would give it a nine out of 10 just because I think overall the production value is there. Uh, costumes and sets are all still really good. Characters like Davy Jones just look incredible. Um, the art style for him and his tentacles, the way they move with his emotions are just so detailed and well done. I'm really only deducting a point for <laughs> the death scene of Beckett just because it felt so effects heavy. Otherwise, I mean, it's really phenomenal. I don't really have a lot of bad things to say about it. I think these movies are really immersive in their production value and really drop the audience into a world that feels very different and very believable. The editing and the cinematography matched the first two movies and it just feels incredibly immersive and believable and fun. So I would give it a nine out of 10. With the acting, I mean, what can I say? It's, you got an amazing cast. You got Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Keira Knightley, all of the actors from the previous two movies. Jeffrey Rush, who just does a fantastic job as Barbosa. So his delivery on his lines are just perfect. Bill Nye, who does a really great job treading that line of like sadistic and evil, but also really vulnerable and heartbroken in his portrayal of Davy Jones. I think all of the actors just do a fantastic job in these movies. And obviously, I think if you didn't have somebody like Johnny Depp, it wouldn't be as fun or as compelling to watch because I think Johnny Depp is just so fun, so captivating and charming on screen. And he just does a great job with anything you give him, but he really figured out what to do comedically with this character in at least these first three movies. And so he's always fun to watch on screen. But I think all of the actors really do a good job of understanding the tone of the world in which they're acting in. It's a unique kind of tone for a movie. You know, it's very like over the top, theatrical with like big grand movements, big grand choreography, super melodramatic moments paired with super comedic reversals. And so the dramatic moments between characters like Elizabeth and Will have to be so soap opera-esque almost and so over the top and dramatic, but they also can't go too overboard. They have to just be at the right level that feels sincere while still feeling like it matches the rest of the tone of the comedy in the movie. And I think the actors do a fantastic job. I think they know exactly what they're doing. I mean, even Keira Knightley's performance in the scene where Elizabeth is realizing that her dad is dead, like I, that moved me a lot. Like it made me really upset. I just enjoy every single actor in this film. Like I think the casting was so brilliant for these movies. And I think every single actor knows their part perfectly and the role that they're supposed to play and how they can help each other. They're all just so good at actively listening to one another, being actively present. Like, I don't think there's a bad actor in any of these movies, and it makes it so enjoyable to watch. So I'm going to give the acting a 10 out of 10. I love the performances in these movies, and I think they do a fantastic job. And last but not least, the story. I think there were some elements of this movie that I enjoyed more than the second in terms of the stakes and just the pacing of the movie in general, I think was a lot tighter than the 
second film. I really enjoyed the way that this story started with the hanging of pirates and establishing this regime of the East India Trading Company and trying to eradicate pirates and showing that even though pirates typically don't work together and get along, there is some level of solidarity there and that is going to be a theme that's explored later on in the movie. I really enjoyed all of these characters that we've met in the first film and the second film coming together in this film and getting to interact with one another, the constant negotiating, the constant double crossing was just really fun to watch. And I think despite maybe the ending feeling like it was wrapped into a neat little bow without maybe feeling completely justified perfectly, I still really enjoyed it. What I mean by that is like the Black Pearl and the Flying Dutchman easily destroyed the Endeavor, which I was fine with that. That was really satisfying and fun to watch, but just watching the entire... <laughs> East India Trading Company just completely give up after that obviously is a little convenient. It would be unlikely, I think, that an entire fleet would give up just because two ships destroyed the Endeavor. But we have to have a happy ending for this movie. And so I'm okay with it. I just think it was a little bit convenient. All in all, I think the story was really fun and compelling. I don't think it was as perfect as the first film, but I do enjoy it more than the second film. And I would definitely watch this movie again and love to share it with friends. So I would give the story an 8.5. So that leaves me with a score of 37.5 out of 40, which is a 93. So an A or an A minus. I'm not really sure, but either way that I feel like that's a pretty decent score, all things considered. Maybe you think that's a little generous. That's fine. I really enjoyed it and had fun with it. And I definitely think this is a movie I would watch again. So um, I'm happy to give it an A or an A minus, depending on what qualifies as an A minus? I don't know. I've been out of school for a long time. <laughs> Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know and I can check out more things like this in the future with all of y'all. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and anything else you might like me to watch next and subscribe if you want to. Till the next one, stay golden. Bye. Thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Again, just make sure to scan my QR code or click the link in my description and use code GOLD to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird.